For the next uh, three Sundays, I'll be preaching on the Old Testament lectionary passages, starting uh, today and the next week in Joshua, and then the following week in Ezekiel. Uh, There's not really a a series or a theme tying these three Sundays together, but I think that's okay. Sometimes it's good just to let the Word of God speak uh, without trying to squeeze it into a framework of our own invention. And one of the things that God's word speaks to us again and again, as we just heard from the scripture and with the children, is that no matter what trials we face, God is with us. Let us pray. Oh God, as we once again bring ourselves before and under the authority of your word in scripture, we pray by your spirit who is with us, that you would plant this word within our hearts today and cause it to grow and bear good fruit for the sake of your kingdom. This we ask together in Christ's name. Amen. The scripture is from Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 to 17. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, Set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon, while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Again, this is the word of the Lord. There are many in my generation who are fortunate enough to have invested countless hours of our childhood playing one of the greatest computer games of all time, the Oregon Trail. The game was designed actually way back in uh, the 70s to teach eighth graders about the harsh realities of all those brave men, women, and families who traveled westward and all the, the dangers that they faced. And in the game, arguably one of the most daunting challenges that the player would face, second only to the omnipresent prospect of sudden death by dysentery, was deciding whether or not to ford the rivers that you came to. You'd come to a river, a window would pop up, it would tell you how wide it was, how deep it was, and give you a list. Do you want to ford the river? Do you want to pay someone for a ferry? Do you want to go around? So you you had this choice. Do we spend the extra days and resources to go around and play it safe, or do we risk losing everything for the chance of a quick crossing? Now, for a thoughtful person, that was a difficult choice. But for an eighth grade boy, it was a pretty easy choice. You just cross that river every time. 
12 feet deep, no problem. Let's, let's take our chances and see how it goes. And it, it didn't go well <laughs> most of the time. But like the real families on the historical Oregon Trail, the ancient Hebrews in the text that we just read were not playing a computer game. They didn't get a do-over. After spending 40 years wandering in the wilderness, God was finally about to lead them into the promised land, and as they prepared to receive their inheritance, they came to a river. We're told that the Jordan River was at flood stage during that time of year. Jordan River is usually not all that big, not all that hard to cross, but scholars estimate that at that time it may have been up to 100 feet wide and 10 feet deep. There was no way that they could cross such a river. And so once again, the Hebrews felt like God's plan may not have been that great of a plan or that well thought out. Every life's journey collides with rivers we are not sure we can cross. Now, literal rivers are not usually our problem, but no matter how well we have planned the path that we want our lives to take, that path is sometimes cut off by forces too deep and too fast for us to handle. And we don't know if we can keep going. Losing a meaningful job, burying a beloved relative or friend, enduring rejection by our school of choice or by someone we thought was a friend, not to mention natural disasters, untimely diagnoses, and all the other unfortunate features of this life. The sheer variety of crises that can flash flood the landscape of our lives is wide indeed. And when those crises reach flood stage, we don't know if we can keep going. Sometimes don't even know if we will survive. What we do know is that God is with us. And God's presence is our salvation. The Lord said to Joshua, I will exalt you so that Israel may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. And then a little later, this is how you will know that the living God is among you. And centuries after this miraculous event in the first scripture we read in Isaiah, God reminds us, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Again and again, this is God's promise to be with us. And when God promises to be with us, it's not just for moral support. God saves by showing up. The saving power of God's mere presence is evident in this story. We're told specifically that the Ark of the Covenant, which you could think about it as kind of containing like the concentrated presence of God, if you will. The Ark of the Covenant would go into the Jordan ahead of the Israelites. God told Joshua, as soon as the priests who carry the Ark set foot in the Jordan, the waters will be cut off. So not only is God present, God is also the first one in. God enters the flood first. God enters the war zone first. God enters the hospital first. God enters the courtroom first. God enters the bankruptcy and the addiction and the depression and the grief first. God's presence precedes our predicament. 
every time. God is the first one into every single flood that we face. God literally can't wait to save us. That's why Jesus is called the pioneer of our faith and the firstborn from among the dead. Just as God was the first one into the Jordan River in the Ark of the Covenant, Jesus is the first one into the resurrection from the dead, blazing a trail that we will one day follow in him. Jesus himself is the saving presence of God that goes first so that we can follow. So again, God's presence is much more than just a nice idea. When God says he is with us, God means business. Amen. <laughs> Perhaps surprisingly, though, the business that God means, this business of salvation, is always carried out through ordinary people. God's presence is our salvation, but God is present through chosen people. In the story, God obviously chose Joshua. God made his presence known not through just some disembodied uh, act of supernatural power, but through Joshua. Before Joshua, of course, it was Moses. Remember, Moses put his staff into the waters and that parted the sea so that the Israelites could make their exodus out of Egypt. And not just Moses and Joshua, but the priests in the story, God worked through them. They stepped into the water with the Ark of the Covenant. That's when the miracle happened. And so they were the people who sort of mediated the presence of God to everyone else. And then, of course, Jesus, the, the Son of God, the God-man, in whom the full presence of God became flesh and dwelt among us. God is always present, but God is always present through Chosen people. Which means that when you are looking for the presence of God in the flood that is already up to your neck, don't just look for some invisible miracle. Look for God in the people beside you in the people who are with you. Look for God's presence in your family and in your friends. Look for God's presence in your doctors and your nurses, in your colleagues, in your companions, and yes, even in the face of your enemies, whom Jesus commands us to love. Because finding God's presence in the people around you is a far greater miracle than just suspending the laws of science and physics. God's real power is not engaging in the supernatural, but entering the natural and being with us on our level, where we are. God is present in the faces of the people around us every day, every moment. And when God is with us, God won't leave without us. When the priests carried the ark into the Jordan, it says the upstream waters piled up in a heap. Now that strange phrase piled up in a heap occurs in only one other place. It's back in the Exodus when the Israelites crossed through the sea as they left Egypt. And so it's a deliberate reminder that the same God is providing the same salvation to the same people. And then there's this note. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan 
while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. So God entered the flood first, and then God stayed there until everyone had gotten through. When God is with you, God won't leave without you. God doesn't rush salvation. You're not going to miss the boat. There's no statute of limitations on God's grace. God will stay with you in the flood until you are safely through it. God will stay with you even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And he will raise you up on that day to stand with Jesus in the glorious company of the saints in light. Until that day, you will still come to rivers on this journey you will still face difficult choices, but they will be easier knowing that God is and will always be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.